All right, Oculus VR yesterday rolled out its multiplayer mode for its cinema app. It's called Oculus Social Alpha. Ben Lang is the co-founder and executive editor of Road to VR. Welcome to the show, Ben. Hey, thanks, Mike. It's good to be here. Glad you're here as well. Uh, in almost virtual reality, sort of, kind of. Sitting in a movie theater probably isn't the most heart-pounding VR experience, but this is something of a milestone, isn't it? It is. So this is Oculus's first time delving into uh, the social world, which is, you know, VR is great, but when you're in there immersed by yourself, uh, it's it's actually more immersive to have people there that are real, um, that you can speak to and interact with. So there are a number of other social applications that have been released um, and are out there right now available and, and growing. Uh, but this is Oculus's very first attempt to do that. Um, so they're calling it alpha, which is uh, a lot of people you know, might think that that means it's gonna be buggy and stuff. But right now it's actually not about bugginess, I think it's more about features. Um, so yeah, right now the features are basically, you can sit in a room with up to six people total and you can watch uh, you can watch Twitch or you can watch a Vimeo with those people and you can talk with them and you're just seeing it on a flat screen. So I think it's alpha in the sense that they're just experimenting now with how the how the social interactions are going to work. Uh, but later on down the road this is going to expand beyond just being able to watch some simple you know flat uh, video on a wall and actually being able to interact in very immersive and significant ways inside of that virtual space. And is it, uh, it seems like it's pretty limited. So you guys can't leave the room or walk around together. Is that just too much of a challenge for them at this point in, in terms of programming that, designing that? It, it's not too much of a challenge. I think it's actually a design consideration. So uh, navigation in virtual worlds is actually, uh, when you're immersed so deeply in there, it's actually kind of an open question right now. What is the best way to get around? Because for a lot of people, if you're going to use a game pad and just you know hold the stick forward to walk forward, um, your virtual body is moving forward and the world around you is moving as though you're walking forward in real life, um, but you're not walking forward in real life. And your body doesn't respond very well uh, to seeing all those normal visual cues of movement, but not feeling any of the uh, physical cues of movement. And so this has been a long ongoing process of experimenting uh, what is the best way to move people people around or maybe even not move people around. In the case of Oculus Social, uh, their social alpha app that they just launched, you're just sitting in these seats and then the, the movement that you have so far is uh, you swipe on the touchpad of the Gear VR and you'll just basically instantly transport from one seat to another if there's an open one. Uh, so that's the extent of the, of the navigation in that space so far. Um, and that's kind of pending finding out a better way or you know maybe we don't necessarily need to walk around in, in these sorts of virtual situations uh, but yeah it's it's I mean it's one of the reasons why it's alpha at this point um, there will probably be more interactions more navigation maybe going down uh, going down the road rather than just being able to teleport from one chair to another it's kind of uh, uh, weird that uh, you know the first app uh, that's social is uh, sitting in a movie theater, which which is doesn't seem to me to be a very compelling experience. I mean, it's like, hmm, how do we improve watching a movie? People talking. <laughs> that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but I do think it's significant. Of course, Oculus is owned. Oculus VR is owned by Facebook, and Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has said multiple times that the future of social is in virtual reality. And I think that you know that is an absolute certainty. People are going to be hanging out with each other. Uh, in real time through avatars initially and then probably through uh, some option to have your actual uh, actual self represented to some extent within VR. Uh, and that is really interesting. So this, of course, is not, you know, the, the Oculus Rift platform, for example, is not out there, so you can't use it on that. Who gets to use this feature and where can they get it? Yeah, so right now, this just launched yesterday on the Gear VR headset. So this is Samsung's headset that was made in conjunction with Oculus. Um, so you can think of this kind of as Oculus's mobile offering. It runs off of a smartphone. Uh, there's a couple different ones that it's compatible with. You can pick up one of these headsets for $99 now. Uh, there's actually a new one coming out uh, toward the end of the year. So wait if you haven't bought one yet. Um, but so yeah, you can download it uh, directly. If you launch the Oculus app on your phone, if you have the Gear VR, uh, you can download it for free right now and try it today. Uh, you can jump into any one of those rooms and uh, sit there and chat with people watching Vimeo and uh, Twitch right now. Netflix uh, also actually has an app already, but it's not uh, social enabled. And so it'll probably get there. And I'm, I'm you know, personally looking forward to that because 
You know, yeah, sure. Uh, watching f basically flat traditional video uh, in VR is not super exciting, but as soon as you add that social aspect to it, it becomes uh, twice as good as it would be otherwise. Because you know, otherwise you're just sitting in a virtual space watching uh, a movie on a wall. But feeling like you're actually sitting next to somebody uh, really, really adds to both the immersion and kind of the usefulness of of virtual reality. Uh, so they've been working really hard, Oculus. Uh, on making this 3D positional audio uh, that's really good. So when someone is sitting in the chair next to you, you're both watching the screen and they talk to you, you hear it really convincingly uh, on the side where they're coming from. So it really starts to add uh, this feeling of being in these you know, social zones with people. It's very interesting. Um, and it's interesting that you mentioned yeah, Oculus is owned by Facebook now. Um, and actually, if you look into some of the early developer uh, documentation for this uh, social alpha program, uh, there's like a code of conduct, which is very Facebook-like, uh, you know, things like, you know, no racial slurs, uh, you know, no hate speech, that sort of thing. So even though there are these little lobbies of up to only six people, um, it's almost like uh, it's kind of being watched in the same way that you might think your, your Facebook posts are being watched. Um, so that's, I think, an interesting thing to think about going forward. Uh, Facebook is obviously looking at the future of virtual reality having, you know, millions or billions of people in VR. Um, but then they kind of get to make the rules here. They get to moderate and uh, monitor these these spaces if they'd like. Uh, so something something to be thought about uh, when looking at the various, I think, social platforms that are out there and, and the openness uh, and freedoms that can exist within them. And then what is like uh, what is the virtual world like right now? Is it mostly friends connecting with friends, or are, are you kind of expecting to go into these rooms and, and meet strangers, interact with people that you're not otherwise connected to? Yeah, so the social alpha is, is Oculus is one uh, specific app so far that does allow you to connect uh, with other people. Right now, there are just a couple of lobbies that you see when you enter into there, and you can join any one of them, and they're just random people in there. Um, as far as I'm aware, the, the very first launch here doesn't have uh, any support to connect with a specific person. You can't type in a username and join a specific friend. Yeah, the lobby's there on the screen. Um, so you just pop into one of those, and it's that's kind of it. It's whoever jumps in there, you can talk with them, and uh, that's neat. But uh, right now, there's no friends list set up. But that's of course all coming down the road. You know, it's going to be uh, at some point should be easy, and probably will be easy to say, here are all my VR friends, and you can join them in various social applications. Uh, as far as the broader virtual social uh, world, I, I mentioned there's other companies working on other apps out there, um, and some of them are further ahead in terms of having a friends list um, and being able to actually see where that person is uh, within that virtual app and be able to jump jump into where they are and uh, uh, join them more easily.